Kanye West. Huh? Kanye you, West? You kind of failed oh, to man. see his genius. Didn't first, you? first of all, the way the way I even met, and I did, I blew it. But I, I didn't blow it, but it worked out. <laughs> It's just because I haven't told you the story yet, but what happened was is that I'm throwing a party for Puff. I throw all these parties in my crib. So I'm throwing a party for Puff and Jay-Z's there and Pharrell's a big party. And this kid walks in with a, with a backpack on and his jaw is busted. And I said, who's that? And they said, that's Kanye West. I said, what do you do? They said, he raps and, you know, he, he produces for Jay-Z. I said, well, everybody that comes to my house got to perform. I got I to gotta, I gotta see what this dude had. So I walked up to him and I said, yo, man, they say you do your thing, you know, you rap. And he killed with this freestyle. It was amazing. I said, wow, I, boy, you're going to be famous, right? <laughs> and then he said to me, he said, he said uh, uh, I have a, a, a song that, that <laughs> I think that you would be great on uh, if we could go uh, to the studio and do uh, that song. I said, man, what? I'm trying to get in the music business. Let's go, because I wasn't in the music business. And I happened to have a studio at my crib. So we go in the back. <laughs> We, we heard that, yeah. <laughs> but the reason I did that because I would, I would throw parties for, for musical people so I could try to get on a record. So <laughs> that's why Puff and Jay Z and all them were there. They didn't know. But we go, <laughs> we, we go in the studio and he says the song uh, goes. Uh, she says she wants some Marvin Gaye, some Luther Vandross. I say I got it, I got it, I got it. She says she wants some Marvin Gaye and some. He said, Yo, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, well, I, I, you know, you don't know, you don't know R and B. See, I'm an R and B singer. See, I got to put the R and B thing on it. See, I got to do that. He said, ah, uh, don't do that. <laughs> he said, just sing it simple because it's, you know, it's hip hop. And I was like, all right. So I sung it begrudgingly, thinking this song is whack. He's not gonna make it. It's, it's not gonna work, right? So I left and uh, I went and did a bad movie and I came back. <laughs> but your jacket. <laughs> did a bad movie, and you I came really back. You really did it, though. I, it, was, it was terrible. <laughs> you really took a chance. It was horrible. <laughs> I do this bad movie, I come back, and I'm in Miami, and my boy was like, yo, remember that song you said was whack? It's number one in the country. Wow. And so that's how, uh, that's how you get it wrong, but right sometimes. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. woo, welcome to you. <laughs> uh, Michael Jackson was a real hero of yours. Um, and yeah, and what, So us. now you, you, did you meet him, or you didn't meet him? There was a... a... No, no, I never... I ne no, I talked to him on the phone. Yeah, so what, how Michael. did that happen? Uh, I was... How did it happen? I was... Cool. I was in Paris, and I was with uh, Kenny Ortega. We were promoting High School Musical 3, I want to say it was. It was probably 20, maybe 20, 21 at the time. And we were at dinner, and... Um, Somehow I got at the, was at the head of the table, and Kenny was on the other side of the table, our director, Kenny Ortega. And um, his phone rang, and uh, I remember I got this look like, you want this phone call? And I was like, okay. So I came over, and I was like, what's, what's going on? And he goes, it's Michael Jackson. I'm like, what? And he hands me the phone, and I was like, uh, hello? And I heard, um, hi, who's this? And I was like, um... This is Zach Efron. I'm a massive fan, and I'm an actor, and, and you're like my hero. And I didn't know what to say. I was like, kind of, I was just at a loss for words and uh, rambling on. And then he said, "That's really nice. Can you hand the phone back to Kenny?" <laughs> <laughs> so I did, and I I was freaking out. Like I just talked to Michael Jackson. He's my hero. I was I was tripping. Um, and I sat back down, just a little dizzy, and then all of a sudden the phone rang again. And um, Kenny answered, and I saw him kind of confused across the table. And, and uh, he like, looked at me again, he's like, do you want to get the phone? And I was like, okay. And he hands the phone to me, he goes, it's, it's Michael Jackson again. And I was like, oh, what? Okay, and I picked up the phone, I was like, hello? And he goes, oh, this is Zach from High School Musical? And I was like, uh, yeah. And he was like, Oh, I'm a, I, I love what you do. I'm a huge fan. I'm, I, I love oh. what you do. And I lost it. I just <laughs> lost it. I lost my balance. I think I fell over into the wall. I started, I was like, do you know who I am? <laughs> and I just started crying. I was, I was a mess. Like, literally, I was just making a fool out of myself. I, like, slid down to the floor pathetically and professed how much I loved him. Said, like, you're my hero. You're the reason I do what I do. Like, thank you so much, Michael, for everything. And... 
Uh, thanks for showing me how to dance, how to be, you know, how to how to believe in myself, how to how to I don't know how to shine, you know. And um, that made him cry. <laughs> they were both crying to each other on the phone. And he ended the whole phone call conversation with um, something along the lines of, "Hey Zach," and I like stopped crying for a second. He's like, "Isn't it isn't it awesome?" And I was like, "What?" And he goes, "Dreams really do come true, don't they?" Oh. And I was like, "Oh, oh come on. I was like, Michael, you can't say things like that." <laughs> Me, man. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. How are you? It's good, thank you. Yeah, nice yes. to see you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. No, yeah, again, because I went to see Michael in concert the yeah. other day. Yeah, I did. Oh. It, it was so good. I saw your film as well, it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice too, because I could see you. There was a point where I was singing and I looked back and all I saw you, you had, I think, a glass of wine of in one I hand. Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw it very clearly, and the other, you were doing this. Hey! <laughs> You were dancing, I said, yes, he's into it, he's into it. I was, I loved it, I loved it. Now, uh, you, you've worked with Jennifer, haven't you? Yes, uh, I was on her special. Yeah. Oh. And we've, we, we've met up at different functions mm -hmm. and things, yeah. Yep. And have you met Dame Judy Gents before? No. We have now. Hi. Yes. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so now, I don't know, does Matthew know that he plays a special part in your life? Uh, no, probably not. Please, I play a special part in your life. Yeah. Can't wait to hear this. Tell us. Well, I mean, I, my wife and I sleep with you almost every night. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and every night there's a, an app called Calm. And I have insomnia. And he has the most beautiful voice. Mm. And I turn it on and I just hear, well, hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> It's me, Matthew McConaughey. I'm gonna tell you a bedtime story. And I just do this, oh. Honestly, God, truth about it is my wife, who's from Argentina, she always goes like, you have the man talking again. <laughs> <laughs> the man is talking in the bed again, Mike. <laughs> it's great, though. I love this. It cost me 80 bucks. <laughs> well, it was well worth it. Have you? Really. No, no, we've got a little bit, because I just thought it was you reading stories, but you are actually putting people to bed. This is, this is Matthew McConaughey on the app. But tonight, I hope to send you off to peaceful dreams with that very thing in mind. <laughs> so let your eyes close and your breath fall soft and slow as we begin our story, which just might rekindle that sense of wonder. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> wake up, wake up. Kendrick, you've noticed something about British people and the way they speak that we do a funny thing. Well, uh, um, well, we here, think it's well. Funny. Uh, no, I mean I love all the every regional <laughs> accent, every dialect. Uh, I'm a big fan. You're not getting uh, into that scone please, mess. Please, please don't <laughs> <my neck. laughs> um, uh, but I, I like that because there's so many accents to such a small country, everybody sort of puts on different voices when they're doing little bits and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I had a thing where uh, I was checking into a hotel and somebody came out and said, oh, do you need help with your bags? <laughs> and I've, I thought they were doing a bit. <laughs> so um, I went, oh, I've been traveling all day, I have no idea. <laughs> kept talking like that. <laughs> so I had to like slowly transition out of it. And I know that that sounds like an exaggeration of their voice, but then I was back in the country several years later and they were on TV on Gogglebox because it was Steph and Dom from Gogglebox. It's and amazing. They really it's like that. They, so they actually talk like that. That is hilarious. I never knew that that was a real hotel yes. bed reference yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But I you stayed, stayed there. there. I stayed there. Yeah. And accidentally made fun of them to their face. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, what's that story you have about the, your... Is it, is yeah, yeah, a very good friend of mine. She was going through a really stressful time, and, and a lovely aunt said, listen, I'm going to get you a head massage. So uh, she went to this clinic, had a head massage. She was in the room, and the woman said, uh, can you take your knickers off? <laughs> a bit weird for a head massage. OK. OK, yeah, so she took her knickers off, and she's like that. And then the woman came back in. She was South African. She went, no, Nicholas, Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas. Nicholas, <laughs> 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 
Douglas off. I get it. <laughs> uh, now, you mentioned Bolton in your school. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, this is so sweet. I, don't, I haven't seen this picture before. This is uh, you in school, and oh. you've sort of changed a lot and not changed at all. This is you just oh. in there. <laughs> What were, what, were you, what were you giving? Well, that was a play called Friar Bacon and Friar Bungie. It's an Elizabethan play written about Shakespeare's time, and I was playing the young heroine. <gasps> but, but there were girls in Margaret, the school. <laughs> you can't quite see the boy in the sixth form who I was madly in love with. Do you want to try and find him? Uh, Brian Oakley. He's quite handsome, that one. Uh, no. No. Never mind. Him? <laughs> I, I don't know him. Uh, I, I, I'm going to struggle. <laughs> I mean, it's a good game, but uh, I'm not sure I'll, I'm not sure I'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> he might be just out of shot, I think, yes. <laughs> oh, dear. And people obviously get very excited when you go on tour and places, rather. What, so you've got a blue plaque, haven't you? Most people have to die to get a blue plaque. Don't you well, got I, I, in Liverpool? I've got a number of blue plaques. Oh, have you? Yeah, I, I've got one on the house where I was born, in Burnley, but I, I did go and visit it on my second only visit to Burnley, because we left when I was two months old, and I think they put it on the wrong house. <laughs> 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 no, this other one is in Liverpool, I think, or Leeds, maybe. Is I it? think it's Liverpool. We thought it was Leeds, but... I think it's Liverpool. We think it's Liverpool. Yes. Yes. Well, what was I doing there? I think... I can tell you what you were doing there. I can tell you what you were doing there. Sir Ian McGillan sat here on table five and enjoyed a jack of potato and a latte. That's precisely what you were doing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you know where that is? It's, it's on the university campus. Oh, OK. the centre of town, yes. yes. Was it a nice potato? Liverpool's <laughs> looking gorgeous these days since they've done it up. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I used to go to Liverpool when I was a kid, and it, it, was, it was a dangerous and dirty and dank place, pre-Beatles, everything. But now, of course, it, it's, it's spanking. It's terrific. Oh, it's beautiful now, yeah. yes. And uh, in the show, obviously, you'll be, you know, as you said, you'll be talking about Shakespeare and doing scenes. And things, yes. But you'll be uh, also telling stories about yes. your, your life and, and Why people, not? people you've worked with. Yeah. There's a story... Actually, do you, Dame Judi Dance tried... Don't ask me to tell another Maggie Smith story. No. Every oh, time no, I no. see her, she says, you've not been doing me again. <laughs> <laughs> now you've done her again. No, I... <laughs> so it is traditional at this point in the show when John Bishop is on the couch to turn to the Americans to say, understanding anything. Yeah, no. Getting, no, no, I'm getting it all. I'm getting, getting it all? Understanding okay. everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good. He said is, is he was in bell? the Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Something about a picture. <laughs> something about, something about a picture. <laughs> <laughs> because talking, talking of accents, this is a weird thing. So, Chris Pratt, is this, this seems so unlikely that you have now learned how to do the voices from Towie. Yeah, sort of, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> we, love, possible? we love that garbage TV back in, <laughs> in the States. My wife was crazy about it, and when I was here filming Guardians, we shot Guardians of the Galaxy here in, yeah. in, in uh, London, and, and my wife, Anna, came out to visit, and she fell in love with this show, Towie, The Only Way is Essex. It's this show that's, like, basically their Jersey Shore. It's the Jersey Shore from, okay. right. from yeah, exactly. here. It's like this... Uh, town somewhere, Essex, I guess, and, <laughs> and, and these folks are just, like, the worst, and, uh, and it was, like, I'm a parrot a little bit, and so when I hear, when I hear it all the time, I just started picking it up and started, like, I could pick up their accent and do their accent a little bit. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm okay. This is gonna sound, this is really embarrassing to do in front of a, a whole room full of Brits here, but I'll try it anyways. So it's like, <clears throat> so, like, I want to say, like, I saw this guy. <laughs> Honestly, did like, did like Michael cheat on me when he was in a beef art, and I was like, <laughs> because he was telling me he's like, you know, no, I miss you or whatever, and I'm like, you like, miss me? What, what am I, your mother? <laughs> <laughs> Useful. That would be useful, <laughs> but that's Wait, very good. Now I want to watch the show. It's good. It's good. Yeah, I love the, the fact that you spent months in England, <laughs> and that's what you talk about. <laughs> I have read, Will, 
that you have uh, this amazing amount of music that you haven't released, but tracks with extraordinary artists like Michael Jackson and Prince and people like that. Will you ever release those tracks? Uh, no, because, you know, especially artists like Michael Jackson, where working with Michael Jackson is his critique and his two cents. So, you know, without him guiding on completing it, it's not my right to to do that. He was a friend, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And what was the story that you brought Michael Jackson and Prince yeah. to? Yes. <laughs> you, you brought Michael Jackson and Prince together. Yeah, so one time we had a show in, um, in Vegas, and Michael Jackson called. Hey, what's well, Michael? <laughs> okay, man. Yeah, so I heard you guys are doing a show tonight. But yeah, we going at 9 o'clock. Oh, rats, I gotta put the kids to sleep. So I was like, well, we, I'm performing with Prince later on at 12. So anyways, Michael came to see me rock with Prince. And it was, a, it was a magnificent night to see. It was me, Chris Tucker, and then watching me, Chris Tucker, Michael Jackson, watching Prince rock on stage. So to make a long story short, Prince steps off the stage and plays the bass in Michael Jackson's face. <laughs> rips the freaking bass in 10 different pieces. Da -da -da -da. Make a longer story shorter, Michael Jackson leaves and goes home and says, leave me in the house for breakfast. So I go to his house for breakfast, knock on the door. First words he says, why was Prince playing the bass in my face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, what was your answer to that, though? Because he's like, oh, No, no, Prince, he's just being nice, you know? No, Prince, he's always been a meanie. <laughs> <laughs> but bless their hearts, they were so passionate. And, um, you know, we've, we've lost a great musician. Yes, we really have that.